Okay, welcome back to our series on systems of equations. On the previous video, we learned how, or we learned about the row operations in reducing, and now we are actually going to completely row reduce this augmented matrix to get our final answer. Now, there are there's a downside and upside to row reducing. The upside, obviously, is that you do a couple operations and you're going to be able to solve a very large system, much like this one where we got three variables x, y, and z. The downside is that there's a couple different ways of doing each step. For example, I could swap. All right, This could be my first step. I could swap row 1 with row 3. Now that's probably what I would do first because then you need this to be a 1 and then you know so that we can make these zeros down here but I know that when I do this and I keep going with the operations I'm gonna get fractions so I'll probably make a video on that when you make when you do this operation first but I'm gonna stick with a different method or a different um, different starting point what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a 1 by doing something a little fancy I'm going to take row 1 plus row 2 and I'm going to store that back into row 1. Now why is that? Well if I were to add these two together right now 3 plus a negative 2 I'm going to get a 1 and I'm going to store that back into this spot right here and I'd get my 1. So uh, two different ways of starting off and I'm going to stick with this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the operations right here and then I'm going to come down here and show my work. Alright, so it's going to be row 1 plus row 2. I'm going to store that back into row 1. Okay, so row 1 plus, and then in row 2 it's a negative 2, and that's going to give me a 1. Okay, and then I I put the one up here. Now um, notice that I'm not changing anything to row two or row three, so I'm just going to write in row two and row three right now. Okay, so let's move on to this spot right here. All right, so we're going to have negative two plus, and then what's in row two? That's a two. And when you add these two together, you're going to get a zero. So I'm going to place a zero up here. And then we'll start with the, we'll do the 8 from row 1 plus the 1 that's coming from row 2. And it's going to give me a 9. I'm going to put a 9 up here. I'm getting lazy, so I'm just going to write these in. And then we got the 9 from row 1. We got the 3 from row 2, and that's going to give me 12. Okay, so we've successfully uh, done our first row operation. So now my next step is to use this one as my new matrix. So I'm going to put that over here, and then I'm going to start my new set of operations. Okay, so remember our overall goal is to change this number right here to a 1, as well as all the ones in the diagonal. So I want that to be a 1, and I want that to be a 1. Once I've gotten them into 1s, I want the numbers below, or basically below the diagonal, to be zeros. So now my next goal is to make this and this into zeros. So this is how I would start off. Since I'm going to have to change row 2 and row 3, I'm going to say row 2, and then below here I'm going to say row 3. Alright, so how am I going to make this a zero? Well, what do you have to add to a negative 2 to get zero? A positive 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this first row by a positive 2. Because then negative 2 plus a positive 2 will be 0. And that's exactly what I want. So let's come down here and start our work. So row 2 plus 2 times row 1. Okay. So we get the negative 2 plus 2 times, and now row 1, that was a 1, and we're storing this back into row one, uh, 2, sorry. Alright, so that's a 0. Okay, next I'm going to take 
the 2, this 2 right here, from row 2, and I'm going to add that plus 2 times what's in row 1, and that's a 0. And I'm going to store that, so 2 plus 0 is 2. Next, I'm going to take the 1, I'm going to add 2 times 9, and that's going to be 19. And then I'm going to take the 3 plus 2 times 12. That's 3 plus 24. That's going to be 27. So then let's place 27 in matrix. Okay, we've successfully finished our first row operation. Um, I, haven't, I haven't done this yet, but we're going to put in the numbers from the first row in here. Okay, so let's move on to row 3. All right, so now I finished row two. I got my zero. I need to make this into a zero. Well, what do I have to add to one to get to zero? And that'd be a negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract off one times row one. Okay, so let's come down and do this um, right here. Right here's good. So row three minus. I'm gonna store that into row one. Sorry, I'm gonna store that into row three. 1 times row 1, store that into row 3. All right, so we're going to get 1, that's coming from row 3, minus 1 times, and then this 1 right here. So that's 1 minus 1, that's 0. Next, we're going to take the 2, and then minus 1 times, and then we have the 0. So that's 2 minus 0, so that's 2. So I put the 2 up in the matrix. And then let's, uh, we've got the negative 3 and the 9. So we got negative 3 minus 1 times 9. And that's going to give me negative 12. So let's put the 12, negative 12 up in the matrix. All right, red. And then our last one is going to be the 8 and the 12. So that's going to be 8 minus 1 times 12. And that's going to be negative 4. So let's put the negative 4 up here. Now let's draw our line down this right here. Close off the bracket. I'm going to change this to a, a, a blue-ish color. And there you go. So now we have our 1 and we have zeros below that and then let's move on to this one. Now I need this to become a 1. Now you have a couple options. You can change this into a 1. Alright, now note, well, how would we do that? We can take row 2 and we can multiply it by 1 half okay, and then store that into row 2. But notice what's going to happen. We're going to have to divide or multiply 19 by a half. That's going to give me a fraction. We're going to have to multiply 27 by a half. That's going to give me a fraction. You know, and if that's and if that's all I can do, then that's that's just what you're going to have to do. But notice that if you look at row three, uh, you have a two there as well. But notice what happens when you multiply everything in row three by a one half. That's going to be a one. That'll be a negative six, and that'll be a negative two. All of them are nice integers. So before multiplying by a half, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap row 2 and row 3. So let's go right that over here. So let's erase this row operation because we're not ready for that one. And we're going to do row 2 swap with row 3. Okay, we've successfully swapped row 2 and row 3. And then we'll move on to the next operation now where we'll multiply the second row by 1 half. Okay, so 1 half times row 2. We're going to store that back into row 2. Okay, so now we're not doing anything with row 1 or row 3, so let's put those rows in. Now let's begin multiplying the second row by one half. So we got zero times a half, so that's going to be zero. Then we're going to have two times a half, so that's going to give us one. 
Next, we're going to do negative 12 times a half, so it's going to give me negative 6. And finally, negative 4 times a half, which will give me negative 2. All right, let's draw our line down right here. Oops. And let's close the bracket, and there we go. So now we have our 1 in our diagonal. We actually lucked out because this is already a 0. Uh, but we're going to have to deal with this 2 down here, so that's going to be our next operation. So let's take our matrix and put it over to the left. Now we're only going to have one operation here. Because this is already a 0, I'm only going to have to do the um, our difficult operation once. So what we're going to do is we're going to take row 2, and we're going to subtract off 2 times row, two, oops, sorry, let me start that again. All right, we're changing row 3. So that's row 3. Now this is a 2, so what do I have to have to make that a 0? We need a negative 2 times row 2. And then we're going to store that into row 3. Okay, so let me write down our uh, operation down here. And then we'll start our work. All right. So row three, that's a two. Okay. We don't have to do it with the zeros because this is just going to keep giving us zero. So two minus two times one, that's going to give me zero. Okay, I put the first zero in. That's this zero over here. Um, now, I'm not doing anything to row 1 and 2, so I'm going to put those two rows in right now. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we have our 19. So 19 minus 2 times negative 6. So that's 19 plus 12. So that's going to give us 31. And their last one, we have 27 minus 2 times negative 2, that's 27 plus 4, that's going to give me 31. So let's go ahead and put a 31 up here. Okay, we're getting pretty close, so let's draw our line and the uh, matrix with our bracket. And there you go, so let's take this matrix, put it over here, and let's start our next set of operations. Now since our goal was to make a diagonal of 1s, all right, we're on our last row, I need to make this into a 1, so let's just simply multiply, the, uh, yeah, let's multiply or divide the uh, third row by 31. Okay, so let's do 1 over 31 times row 3, and store that into row 3. All right, so I'm not changing anything with the first two rows, so I'm going to put those up there. And then we're just going to multiply the third row by 1 over 31. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's draw our line. Let's close off the bracket, and there we go. So we are almost done. We have one left, and that's to complete or make these right here into zeros. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, last set of operations. So these need to be ones, or I'm sorry, these need to be zeros. So let's take row one, and we're going to subtract off nine times row three. Because if we do that, let's see what happens. And then we're going to store that back into row 1. So we're going to get 9 minus 9 times 1. And that's going to be 0. Then we're going to have 12 minus 9 times negative 2. Okay, so that's 12 plus 18. Oops, sorry, that's not a negative 2. That is a 1. Okay, so that's going to be a 3. So let's just put a 3 up here. All right, and then we have our third row, which we're not changing. Now on to row 2. So it's going to be row 2 plus 2 times row 1. We're going to store that into row 2. And if you do it correctly, you get that. And so let's close off the matrix and... Oop, this is actually a 1. So our answers, x equals 3, y equals 4, 
z equals 1. And I'll leave you to check that.